The Adventures of Tim. My brother Tim was an active child. We have home movies of him at the beach when he was only two years old. He would get up on the sand and he would go racing for the water as fast as those little legs would carry him. And when his feet got wet, he'd flip them up in the air and land with a splash. He'd grin, then he'd do it again and again. At the end of the swim, either my mom or my dad had to clean three pounds of sand out of his diaper before he could get his bath. Back home in our hometown of Troutman, North Carolina, he was always up for any game that our sister Llewellyn or I would propose. He was five years younger than me and two and a half years younger than Lou. So whether it was football or baseball or jacks or hopscotch, jump rope, you name it, he was ready for it. Why, he even had a part-time job at Neal's Grocery Store when he was 12 years old. Having an active younger brother has a lot of advantages, but there was one disadvantage that I found out about when he was four years old. We shared a bedroom on the upstairs of our house. The window in the bedroom looked out over Murdoch Road. You could see the railroad tracks on the left, all of our neighbor houses out in front, and in the distance was the Iredell County Fairground. It started out innocently enough, one night I heard him call my name and looked over. He was standing on the bed going, Ricky, Ricky, hike, hike. Well, we had been playing football the day before, so it sort of made sense. And the next morning I told the story and everybody got a big kick out of it. Well, Tim didn't remember a thing about this. About that time, one of the TV stations in Charlotte began running episodes of The Adventures of Superman on Saturday mornings between their cartoons. So the next Saturday morning, Tim, Lou, and I got our cereal, and I turned the channel so we would watch Superman. That night, I heard a noise. I looked over, and there was Tim, standing in his bed with his hands on his hips, his jaw jutted out. Then he marched over to the window, raised the screen, and he jumped out! Well, I ran to the window, but instead of seeing him in a heap on the ground, he was flying over Murdoch Road. He started out at the railroad tracks. He flew over all of our neighbor's houses. Then he flew back over our house. So I ran to the back of the house and looked out the window just in time to see him land on the ball field where we would play football and, bat and baseball. Well, he marched around for a couple of minutes. Then he jumped back up into the air and flew toward the house. I got back to the bedroom just in time to see him fly in the window, land on his bed, then he lay down and was fast asleep. I didn't know what to do. I went to the window, closed it and locked it, then decided I'd wait until morning before I took any more action. When Tim woke up, I told him what I'd seen. He looked at me like I was crazy. I said, well, just look at your feet. See the grass stains from the ball field? This really wasn't very convincing evidence because the kid had grass stains on him almost all the time anyway. Well, I couldn't figure out how to, to remedy this problem, so I decided to ask Lou and see if she had any suggestions. After I told her what happened, she looked at me and said, you're both weird. I've told mom she should have another girl, so at least I'd have somebody with some sense around here to talk to. Lou might have been right, but it was obvious she wasn't going to be much help in this problem. I decided to go to the newspaper and look at the TV section for the next week, and then I had an idea. The next Saturday, while we had our cereal, I switched the channel, and we watched Zorro. That night, I stayed up to see what would happen, and sure enough, Tim got up and came over to my bed and started slashing Z's into my pajamas. I had to endure this for a couple weeks until finally he gave up his nighttime ramblings. Then I could sleep soundly again. Until those folks on Saturn started sending me messages, but that's another tale.